Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. My name is Jacqueline Marindwa, and today we will be sharing about dying to sin. This is, comes to us from the series Christ Like Life. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to share your word again. I pray that you use me as a vessel, all for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. A scripture is taken from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 to 25, and I'll read it. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd, the overseer of your souls, the word of the Lord. What does it mean to die? For someone or something to die must have been living, and now it shows no trace of life in it. That is death. Some characteristics of living things are growth, development, reproduction, response, or adopting to the environment. Living things also feed. And as far as sin is concerned, you and I must be dead to the growth and development of sin Reproduction, how do we reproduce sinful lives? By recruiting others to come and join us in our sin, in our sinful habits. We must have a positive response. We must no longer have a positive response to a sinful environment. We don't adapt to sinful behavior those things should no longer exist in our lives when we accept Jesus. And our feeding habits also change. As people who are dead to sin, our feeding habits change. We, we begin to feast on spiritual food, which is the word of the Lord. And our hunger is for none, nothing other than righteousness. And our thirst is for the word of the Lord. We hunger and thirst for righteousness. Yes, we may have lived in these sins, but when we encounter Jesus, we must no longer live in them. When we talk about sin, what comes to your mind? James chapter 4 verse 17 says, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. So when you know the good that you ought to do and you don't do it, you are sinning. And sin has uh, wages. Just like you work and are paid, the wages of sin is death. Not death of this flesh that we are in. Death. The second death. The death of your spirit. First Peter Chapter 2, verse 21. The verse just before the verse, the text that was given to us to share from. Scripture says, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example, that you should follow in his steps. Jesus set a precedent already that we as Christians ought to follow. The scripture we read says Jesus was without sin. He came, put on flesh just like you and I, but he did not sin. So for us to have a Christ-like character, we die to sin. On a daily basis, we put off everything that causes us to sin. No deceit was found on his lips. You know that when we lie, we become children of the devil. Because Jesus is truth itself. When insulted, he did not retaliate. How do we behave, brothers and sisters? When someone insults you, how do you behave? Do you uh, not retaliate? 
or you say I will wait for my opportune time and then I will pay back. When he suffered, he made no threats. Today, when you meet people who who are connected, you you don't just make them suffer. They will threaten you. They will tell you talk to so and so. They will tell you this and that. But Jesus made no threats. He was the Son of God. He had a right to tell them, "Do you know who my Father is?" But he didn't. He made no threats. He entrusted himself to Him who judges justly. He knew a time would come and God would exalt him. He bore our sins in his body on the cross. Oh, how heavy that burden must have been for Jesus. So that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we are healed. Healed from what? Healed from wounds sin inflicts on us. Sin can wound brothers and sisters. But thanks be to God that Jesus, Jesus wounds the ones he got for you and for me, bring us healing. We were like sheep going astray, but now we have returned to the shepherd, the overseer of our souls. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the overseer of our souls and he is the good shepherd. When you read Psalm 23, he is the good shepherd. He makes sure all is well with the sheep. And the sheep is you and I. First Peter chapter 2, verse 10 to 12 says, For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 says, Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners to abstain from sinful desires which, re- which wage war against your soul. We are foreigners, we are here for just a time, and it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we abstain from sinful desires because sinful desires lead to destruction. Sinful desires make us end in in eternal torment. 1 Peter 5, 4 says, And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. That crown of glory is what we are looking forward to. And Revelation Chapter 21, verse 6 to 8 says, He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. To those who are victorious, those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fairy lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. It is my prayer that none of us will ever be a candidate of the second death because that's torment for eternity. Let us pray. A loving Father, we thank you so much for the gift of Jesus and for what he accomplished for us on the cross. Thank you for encouraging us to die to sin and live for righteousness. Father, I pray that you take away every appetite we have to do things that displease you, things that take us to hell. And may we live for you above everything else. Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that we were dead in our transgressions, but because of your grace for us, we are now dead to sin. And we live for you. I pray that you will touch each and every person that is still dead in their transgressions to come to you, that you may give them rest, because only you can. That they may also look forward to eternity. I pray that we will learn to meditate on your word on a daily, because your word tells us that uh, I have kept your word in my heart. In Psalm 119, verse 11, your word tells us that I have kept your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. The only way that is going to help us die to sin is by keeping your word in our hearts. Give us hunger and thirst for your word and for righteousness. And when we finally do this, we shall all 
enjoy eternity with you. We thank you. Thank you for using me. And I have prayed all this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.